back to the book of Jonah, last chapter, the book of Jonah, uh, last chapter, and uh, um, in this chapter, Jonah basically regrets that he kept his commitment to God. Remember in chapter 1, God said, go to dinner, and he said, I'm not going, he went the other way, and God got him in the fish, and they had a prayer meeting, and he repented, and, and, uh, and then in uh, chapter number 3, uh, the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, and he went, and he preached, and God gave revival. And spared the city. Well, in a nutshell, what happens in chapter 4, uh, Jonah, uh, uh, he's just a real stinker in chapter number 4. Uh, he, he, he's mad that God answered prayer. By the way, Jonah would have died had God not spared him. But he didn't want the same mercy shown to the Ninevites. Uh, so he's angry. Uh, twice he wants to die. He's suicidal or just saying that. Or, uh, he, he's just not a very good example of a Christian. That, well, and he's certainly not a very good example of a servant of the Lord. He certainly was not a very good example of the Lord himself. Now, I'm not saying that judgmental because I don't know that there is a human being on the planet that's ever kept every commitment he or she made to the Lord. I, I, I've never met one like that unless there's someone here and you would like to testify. So I'm not being harsh on Jonah. Uh, secondly, I, I don't know of anybody that at some point in their life was glad to receive God's mercy for something dumb, dumb we've done, but then we got mad because God was good to somebody else that we didn't want God to be good to. So um, I, I think we have to see a lot of us in this last chapter. Uh, I've broken this thing down into basically the, this subject, our attitude. Our attitude to ourselves, which is usually pretty congenial, and our attitude toward others, whether they deserve it or not, uh, can be very censorious very legalistic and uh, so I just want to walk you through chapter number four there's really not that much I, I can say about chapter four I mean uh, Jonah just just wasn't right about things but I, I want to go for after that we're going to look at Abraham for a minute who was right about his attitude toward others and uh, then we're going to look at the uh, uh, the life of the Lord and his attitude toward lost people. And uh, then we're going to go to Ecclesiastes for just a minute and look at uh, what God has to say about us making promises toward him and toward others, and we don't keep those promises. So we're going to look at that for a minute, and then we're going to just do a practical application. So I, I think we settle this whole thing down to attitudes. So, first of all, it's just 11 verses, let's walk through. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was very angry. God did something good for someone else, and it upset him greatly. As a matter of fact, in the Hebrew, the tone is, he was so angry, it was a sinful angriness, angriness. And he prayed unto the Lord and said, by the way, notice the flip-flop. He's mad as a jack, but he's going to turn right around and pray unto the Lord. Yeah. How, boy, anger can, uh, really turn us inside out and make us be almost stupid in our relationship to each other and 
say, which one of us, is there anybody here that has not at some point not gone through an experience like that? And he prayed unto the Lord, and he said, I pray thee, O Lord, was not this my saying when I was yet in my country? Therefore I fled before thee unto Tarshish, for I knew, well, let me stop at Tarshish and say this, now we're getting the real reason, and I'll really explain to you why you didn't want to go a good, those Jews hated Gentiles because Gentiles were their oppressors. By the way, Gentiles were their oppressors because of the judgment of God on the Jewish state for not obeying him, their Lord. So now we're finding out for sure why we're getting the motive behind his displeasures. For I knew that thou art a gracious God, and merciful, slow to anger, and great of kindness, and repentest thee of the evil. I want you to see here, even though this was such a wicked place, that God had determined to blow it up in 40 days. But yet God, there was also the other side of God that was very merciful, that if they would repent, that God would spare them. That might be a good something for us to meditate on in these days of our own nation. While our nation is certainly plunging headlong into open and unchecked sin and rebellion against God and His Word, yet uh, God can still fix it. God's a merciful God. Now, therefore now, O Lord, take I pray thee my life for me, for it is better for me to die than to live. Now, we, we can't enter, being Gentiles, we cannot enter in the spirit of a good Jew and his attitude toward Gentiles, because that's not fully developed until we get to the New Testament. You mean the animosity toward the foreigners was so great that he'd rather die than see God bless them? Yeah. Yeah. That's how zealous, even to the point of being a zealot, that a Jew can get. Then said uh, the Lord, Dost thou well to be angry? And by the way, the correct answer is no. There is never an excuse for being angry unless it's a holy anger against sin. But there's never an excuse for this kind of anger. It, it, it just does not belong in the Christian arena. So Jonah went out of the city and sat on the east side of the city and there made him a booth, uh, just a little shade to get a uh, little planks or, or whatever to get out of it and sat under it in the shadow till he might see what would become of the city. Well, we already know by looking at this whole chapter that what he was waiting for was for God to blow him up. And that's what he's waiting for. That's what he wanted. Now I want you to see. Now here's a here's a man. His whole attitude, his whole spirit is wrong. His commitment to love uh, to God was bad. I mean, there wasn't anything positive to be said about Jonah. But I want you to see God's tender, loving, compassionate care toward a man who openly. Uh, regretted that he went and preached, justified that he ran the other way, he got angry, would just as soon these people have all died, including 120,000 children. What would be your response? What would be my response other than probably scorn uh, to such a human, human being as this? I want you to know it's God's love and care and compassion. And the Lord God had prepared a gourd and it made, made it to come over Jonah that it might be a shadow over his head to deliver him from his grief. Now, it ain't got good to his children. It's funny how we want mercy from God, but God, when we see misdeeds in others, our spirit is that of God. That's not right. That's not right. So Jonah was exceeding glad for the gourd, had more concern for his physical comforts than the 
salvation of uh, 600,000. By the way, I misquoted a couple of weeks ago. I said the city was 60,000. I looked back at my notes. No, the city it was about 600,000 because there were about 120,000 children. To say that they didn't know their right hand from their left hand is a Jewish way of saying these are little kids from, say, about one year to four years old. About 120,000. So Jonah was exceeding glad for the glory. I sometimes, and it grieves me, to see people think more of their stuff than the souls of other people. But God prepared a worm. By the way, there's several miracles here. God prepared a gourd, God prepared a worm, God prepared an, an east wind. Uh, these were all miracles of God. The God who created this earth can manage it the way he wants to, and he can interrupt and negate the normal order of how he made things. But God prepared a worm when the morning rose the next day, and it smote the Lord that it withered. And it came to pass, when the sun did arise, that God prepared a vehement east wind. Now, uh, I, I'm amused around here, as long as I was in West Texas and eastern New Mexico and central New Mexico, I, I get amazed at our weathermen who, uh, 25 mile an hour wind is a major event. Are you kidding? That's a breeze out there where I was for years. There were times we could not do the graveside service of people that had died because the wind was so strong they couldn't keep the tent up and the chairs wouldn't stay in place. I've done funerals out there when we go to the graveside out in the high plains where we had to have enough men there to open car doors for senior citizens because the wind was blowing so strong they couldn't open the car door from the inside. Now folks, that's a wind. That's a week. And the sun beat upon the head of Jonah that he fainted and wished himself to die. That's the second time. And said, it's better for me to die than to live. Wow. Has this fellow have a bad attitude? Boy, to say the least. And yet look how good God is. And God said to Jonah, Dost thou well to be angry for the gourd? And of course, the answer was no. And he said, I do well to be angry even unto death. There's a third time. Then said the Lord, here's the application, Thou hast had pity on the gourd for the which thou hast not labored, neither madest it to grow, which came up in a night and perished in the night. And should not I spare Nineveh, that great city, where in are more than six score thousand persons, that's 120,000 kids, little kids, that cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand. In other words, little children who, who did, didn't know much yet. And also much cattle. In the old world, in the Old Testament world, I already mentioned this to you, they always included the livestock, the animals in saving things or not saving things. So we see, first of all, Jonah's terrible attitude because of his bigotry against Gentiles. Even though Gentiles were their oppressors, and Gentiles were their oppressors because God made them so because they, the Jews, were disobeying God and had left God and left the law and gone into idolatry. But of course, Jonah didn't see that. You know, the old saying, we're all the heroes of our own stories. So I want you to look at one more illustration of another uh, person with a very bad attitude. I'd like for you to turn to Luke chapter number 15. Luke chapter number 15. There was this good father who had two sons. One said, give me my inheritance. I'm going out to see the world. And the father divided the inheritance and the younger brother went out to 
see the world and wasted his life and everything he had on wine, women, and song. And finally, even though he was a Jewish boy, he ended up feeding pigs. And he said, you know what? This is ridiculous. My father's got so much. I'm going to go home. I'm going to repent. I'm going to make things right with God. And the father, of course, received him. But that's <coughs> not the end of the story. Uh, I, I want you to see uh, verse uh, beginning in verse number 25. The, the elder son stayed home and worked the farm. Now his elder son was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing, and he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, Thy brother is coming, and thy father has killed the fat calf, because he has received him safe and sound. And he was angry. Ah. And we're not going to win. Now, how's that for a grown man? Got mad and wouldn't even go to the house. Therefore came his father out and treated him, and he said, uh, to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, and neither trust I at any time thy commandments, yet thou never gavest me a kid that I may marry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son that was come would devour thy living with her, thou hast killed from the fat cat. Attitude. Attitude. I'm going to say this very gently and very carefully. Those people, you know, including us, who are, who are going to go off in that bad direction and uh, <clears throat> who have been faithful and stay in church and have stayed the course of the Christian life, there's a real danger. We have to be careful we don't look down the nose of people who have not stayed the course. Am I making sense that? Yes. We get that as well. We didn't do that, so we're paying. How dare these people come into this church? <clears throat> how dare they? God put them here. That's how dare they. <laughs> so, we have to watch our attitude. Amen? Yes. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> I want you to go to Genesis 18, and we're going to look at a different example, a good example. Genesis chapter number 18. Matthew 9. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in the synagogues 
preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. When I saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and they scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Attitude. On the negative side, Jonah. brother of the prodigal, selfish, self-centered, vindictive, mad, look down your nose at other people. Then we have Abraham, who interceded with God to stop what was fixing to happen. And our chief example in life is the Lord Jesus Christ. By the way, those places where he was going to preach in Jewish synagogues, they didn't like him. They did not accept him as their Messiah. They called him an imposter. They called him names. They ended up eventually killing him. And the Lord knew that it was going to happen. He went to him and preached him anyway. Let me say something. I'll say it very gently, but I, it, I want you to understand it comes out of my own heart with deep conviction. And, and largely because of uh, where my life started and, and how I came to be where I am today. And most of my life has been <clears throat> picking up broken churches. Christianity that doesn't cost anything. I question if it's real. Let me say something else. And again, you, you don't know my heart, you don't know where this is coming from or where I've been in my, in my life, but Christianity, where I always have to come out on top of the winner, I, I have some real questions about that kind of Christianity. Jesus didn't come out of winner. I'm talking about you, Mr. Paul did. He saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion on them because they came in and were scattered broad sheep, having no sinners. Thus, then said he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenty, but the laborers are few. You know what? There have never been enough people to do the Lord's work from day one, and still through today. Pray you therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. And it so the application is simply this. By the way, it's natural not to like people who are not like us. It's natural for people to rub us against the grain. It's natural not to like some people and to hate some people. But Christians aren't natural. Christians are born again believers who have the Holy Spirit inside. And the Holy Spirit has to, uh, treating people right like Jesus did, his enemies, and, and uh, like Abraham did, because he knew what kind of a wicked place Sodom and Gomorrah was, and, and he, he prayed for God to spare him, not to kill him. To love people who aren't like us, to care for folks who aren't like us, to treat people uh, 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 good who are intrinsically bad, and, and when the Lord gives us the opportunity to pull them out of the gutter, we do it. That takes the Spirit of God to work in us. Because the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. Our relationship with others, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, <clears throat> attitude, attitude. <clears throat> Something we all need to think about. <clears throat> and by
by the way, in case you think uh, something else, I have to work on this all of the time. I do personally. I have to work on it all. My wife spends a lot of time correcting me for my attitude. By the way, thank God for me. my foot. And they keep us in line a lot of times when we would absolutely step off the cliff. And so, attitude. God doesn't ask us to do anything that he won't help us do. Amen. And so, he helps us with our attitude. And yes, he puts people in our lives that help us. I was, uh, let's see. Boy, it, 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 it rattled my case. I've been thinking about this a lot. Uh, let's see, Monday, Tuesday. Yesterday morning, or uh, anyway, some few days ago, I was at the gym, and uh, <clears throat> it's not my favorite place to be. I, I do it because it's easier to stay in shape than it is to credit and end up in a wheelchair. You know, I, I'm not trying to build anything. I'm trying to keep from some things happening. And, and the manager, so it's a young lady, she come over and I was on one of the machines and, and I was pushing pretty hard. She come over and she's never done this before. She come over and she said, are you mad? <laughs> and I said, what? She said, are you mad? I said, no. I said, you look mad. <laughs> I said, well, you know, I'm, I'm working out, and it's not fun, but no, I'm really not. I said, are you okay? I said, yeah, I'm really fine. Well, you know what? I've, ever since then, I've been trying to think about how I'm looking. I can't get it out of my mind. I don't want anybody to think I'm mad. That's not a good testimony, people. Amen? So we all need help with our attitudes. And God has given us a Holy Spirit to help us with that. Amen? All right. Well, I really didn't know how I was going to do this last chapter because I just didn't. But finally this afternoon or this morning, Pat was going to a ladies' meeting and finally I just sat down and it was quiet in the house and I said, Lord, how am I going to do this? The manager started to You want to see my notes? <laughs> How's that for a lot of notes for Sunday? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you all for coming tonight. May the Lord bless you. Yes, sir. I got one question. Yes, sir. I was, I was wondering, because Jesus will be crucified. Yeah. He's on the cross. Yes. Could he have asked angels at any moment to save him? Could have. That's what he said. Stop it. Yeah, he, that's what he said. He, he, uh, he could have called 10,000 angels, but then that would have doomed and damned you and me and everybody else. He made that promise to his father that he would do that for us sinners, and he kept his word. Could he have? Absolutely. By the way, today he could just say, and this whole planet would be a speck of dust. Yeah. But he doesn't, because God has an agenda. But yes, to answer your question, he certainly could. It's a good question. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's stand. Okay.